So I have now been building in a number of places in the valley. You can kind of almost guess which sites are going to need piles and which sites aren't, but it still varies a lot. So here in Upper Hutt, we're in a basin, there's a river over there and the hills over there. Over there you might have to drive piles to two metres, but then as you come in you can start getting away with just a rib rough slab designed for a lower ground pressure. What I've learned is it's about where you're building, what you're building and who's doing the engineering. Good ground is defined in NZ3604 as having a load bearing capacity of 300 kPa. It's the most common way to measure pressure. Whenever you've got bad ground, which is common on 50% of the sites we're working on, there's a couple of ways to resolve that. One of the ways is driven timber piles, and you've seen us do that on three or four jobs now. Another way is to drill a hole and fill it with concrete, put a lot of steel in it, and then build off it. Behind me is a pile driver. So we smash the piles down until we hit good ground. On this site here, it's about three meters. So imagine this was your house here. And we would put a concrete foundation under it and good ground would normally be 300 to 600 mils away. But in this instance here, good ground is over three meters away from the floor. So what do you do in that instance? You drive a bunch of timber piles under the foundation all the way down to the good ground or rock at the bottom. And what happens is the timber piles transfer the load up here all the way down to here. Timber piles, there's going to be 72 under this slab here on the townhouse job. Building two townhouses here side by side with a firewall in the middle. Boys are going to come in tomorrow and chop all of the piles to height. Then we put our DPM on, then we put on our pods and our steel and our concrete. I like to point out to people that hey, we can give you a pretty good understanding of costs based on everything from the surface up. But if you want to know about what's happening from the surface down, the best way to do that is to get an engineer to do a soil test. They'll bring on site a pentrometer and they'll do a number of blows and they'll write your report telling you exactly where good ground is. And if you're worried about buying a site, that may have been in a previous swamp. That should be something you're doing. The thing to remember is to find good ground, it's not like it's gonna double the build budget. It, it will definitely add a cost, but it's not gonna be like double or triple your build budget. On this one here, we have to drill 59 holes to a depth of 1.5 meters. So what I do is I'll go back to another job for example, the section nobody wanted, we had to drill 57 holes from memory to four meters deep. So I keep a time log of that, and I can look at the drill piles, and at the time, these are the figures I spent 103 hours, and we used one pump and four grand of concrete and the digger driver's fee. So I can look at that job and say, well, if that was 57 holes to four meters deep, and that cost that much, now we're in, I'm giving my clients an estimate on 59 holes to 1.5 meters deep. I can use that. Point 0.225 of a hole, 1.5. So each hole will be that there. So then we go 59 holes, point, point 0.25 is 14 cube. 
and we times that by our concrete rate and that gives us the concrete price. On the section nobody wanted, I decided to go for drilled and filled holes. Which was fine, apart from the day that I went to fill the holes, it was raining a lot. Um, one of my worst days on site. What the heck am I doing in wet weather gears? The thing is, I, I have to. I've got these holes and they've been checked by the engineer and we need to get them filled. Somehow you just get out here and do it. I think there's no hard and fast rule, but it depends on the site, the engineer, how deep you're going, all of those things, and then we'll work out, hey, we think this is the best plan of attack. We deliberately placed the house as far uh, that way as we could because we wanted to get as much uh, lawn as we possibly could. We drilled down three metres, put a metal cage in the hole, and then we filled it up with concrete. Because we're right near the edge of the bank, it transfers the load of the house from the top of the bank all the way down to good ground at the base of the bank and just gives Jeff and Jen peace of mind that their house, their bedroom, yeah, yeah the, the house is not going to go sliding down the hill. Well, what, whatever method you choose, and there's reasons why we choose one method over the other. In particular, we chose this one because we only needed to do eight and we want to tie them into the foundation. We decided to do it ourselves. It was a job that we could get in and out and do reasonably quick, and that's what we decided here. Worth it in the end though? Absolutely, you feel like you're in the bush. What a view. I might just stay here with the house. 